What's up guys, my name is Dax Brule. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to be talking about lenses and different lenses you should get when you're starting photography. From my experience, I've started photography. I've been doing it for about two years, did video for one, and pretty much I've gone through the lenses. I've used a variety of different lenses and from manual to automatic, I've kind of learned which ones I think were the best helpful for me when I was beginning. I'm still not in the professional range, I would say, but I do know a bit about when I was beginning different lenses that I use. Let's get started. The first one, everyone has this. I don't know if you shoot Canon, Sony, all this different stuff. There's the beginner lens. What I have here is the 18 to 55 millimeter lens on the Canon cameras, for example, because if you shoot Canon, this is how it goes. I'm not sure exactly for Sony, but there is a standard focal length that most people get. And for me, um, on the Canon lenses, it's the 18 to 55. Now this lens was actually one of my favorite lenses, I would say, just because of the versatility of it. You can, if you zoom in enough and you put your aperture high enough, you can get good portrait shots with this lens. But at the same time, if you go super wide and you put your aperture nice and small, so that you get everything in detail, you can get some insanely crispy landscapes. This is when it comes to, I've learned a lot that it's not really about the gear at all. It's all about your composition because on my $4,000 camera I have today with my $1,000 lens, I can still get photos just as good on my old set, which was about $1,000 instead of $5,000. Shooting this way, Keep that in mentality because first of all, you can save a lot of money. You can focus on learning about the gear, the lighting, things that are more important. Like I just made a video on lighting. That's a lot more important than the gear you have. Lighting a scene, how to composition, how to frame it. As you can see, I'm framed here. Why am I framed on the right side? Because it's more interesting to the eye with the rule of thirds to put your subject off to one side instead of straight in the middle. Different things like that. So don't overthink the lens, but this is the first lens you will get in your kit and it's a great lens. So use it to learn about what type of photography you like. That's what I used it for. I liked a lot of portraits, so I would zoom in and take a lot of nice portraits from far to create that nice depth of field, that shallow depth of field. And then I would also take a lot of landscapes and I learned that I like both. So I have to find another lens that suited both. Now, if you decided that portraits are your thing, there's one lens that is a key for you the 50 millimeter f1.8. This lens I think everyone should own. Actually, funny story, I don't own it. Why am I saying that? Uh, my friend owns it, so I just borrow his when I need it. But this lens is good. For a hundred bucks, you can get it. The old version, you can get a hundred bucks. They have a new version, which is more sturdy with metal, is around, I think, 150, 200. But it is a good lens. 1.8 is an aperture that can open very, very wide and shoot very well in low light. And what the aperture does is it not only does it let more light in so you can shoot at lower light situations, it also creates a shallower depth of field because there's more light coming in so it, it can't focus on everything. It's kind of pretty much think of it as a bucket of water. You dump in a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of water. It can't contain it so it kind of leaves parts out of focus compared to if it was a small aperture hole a lot of water would go in. It's kind of focused so everything can be nice and crispy. That's how I kind of think of it. But point is 50 millimeter f1.8 is a great lens for anyone trying to get into portrait photography. Even if you're not doing portrait photography, just learning about the apertures and getting a 1.8 is a great tool for creating all sorts of creative exposures where you have one thing in focus, one thing not in focus. Let's see if I can throw up some examples of people who take some photos with the f1.8. I think I have some photos of the f1.8 that I'll throw up with my old setup, which was like $1,000, like a, I think it was actually $700 total. It's a great lens, super good, super versatile. Now, if you think that's a little too tight, you can move on to the 40 millimeter f2.8. Now, this was the lens I got. My friend got the f50 millimeter 1.8 and I used it plenty, but I also used my 40 millimeter 2.8. Now, the 2.8 is not as bad because it's a little, little wider. I always find it with the f1.8, it's kind of hard. All your portraits are kind of super tight unless you go super far back. And just comp composing is a little tough because it's a prime, right? So you always gotta move. If you have that little more wide, I was able to get a little bit of vlogging in actually with this, with this lens because even if it was really tight, it was still a little bit wider. And also at that 2.8, I could still shoot low, low, low light. So it's kind of like that, if you don't think it's gonna be, if it's gonna be too tight, if you've seen the photos, you think it's gonna be too tight, go for the 40 mm 2.8. It's just as good, crispy. Remember these prime lenses are a lot sharper than these zoom lenses, so if you're really debating what you're gonna go for, get a prime, 
that's the way to go because it's gonna be so much more sharp because there's no focus, there's no there's no uh, changing uh, focal length, things like that. The prime lenses are gonna be sharper if you just wanna look a lot better on an easy, like an easy quick tip is get a prime lens. This is the next lens I was actually gifted on my birthday is an 18 to 35 Sigma 1.8. Now this is an expensive lens, a thousand dollars, big budget, not telling you guys you guys should get it right away or ever get it, but I'm gonna explain to you how I've had the experience with this lens. Since it's a crop sensor and I lens, APS-C crop sensor, same thing, which means the sensor is smaller. So I put it on a full frame, so I'm not getting the full use out of it, but this lens does have a good focal range. I find that 35 millimeters, if you zoom it in, you can get very good portraits, especially because it's a 1.8, the shallow depth of field is amazing. But at the same time, if you zoom all the way up to 18 millimeters, which on my camera, technically it's full frame, but technically it's around 25 millimeters, it is wide enough to shoot things like this. For example, this is a pretty wide video that I'm shooting right now. You can see a good amount of things. And this is not, this is at 24 millimeters. This is not even at 18. There's still six millimeters that I can zoom out. So it is a very good middle ground thing, especially because there's not too much to choose from. So you're kind of limited on your creativity, especially just because it's not a super wide, this is a super good lens to shoot on just because it's super crispy and it really gets amazing images but you still have that choice in between the two focal lengths. Now finishing off, the last lens I used was an RF lens actually for the Canon EOS R, which is the camera I have, which is my friend's 35 millimeter 1.8. Now coming back to the same, the 1.8 prime lenses, these things are amazing. If you are looking for a crispy lens that can really just up your photography game, up your video game, get a prime. A prime is really just the best lens to have. It just has such crispy thing and it forces you to move on your feet and stay active as a photographer. You get lazy when you have a zoom. You just zoom, zoom out, zoom in. Don't move the camera. But when you're moving the camera, you're moving around, you see different angles, you see different things. So it forces you to see those different perspectives and move your feet, which is amazing to do. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe, comment below, like all that stuff, but don't, if you don't want to, I don't mind. I just love making videos for you guys. I hope you enjoy. I hope you guys have a good day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Woo!